What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for AwesomeMode.com, and I am back with my NFL Top 5s. My Top 5 tight ends, wide receivers, running backs, and quarterbacks on DraftKings for Week 6 in the NFL. Now be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, only place you're going to get updates to my sim results as we get closer to lock. Let me know in the comments section, who are some of your favorite and least favorite plays for this week? And finally, shout out to No House Advantage for being the presenting sponsor of this video. Use the promo code AWESOMO when signing up at No House Advantage and get a little bit of extra cash on that first deposit. You guys can see the defenses on the screen right now. I'm not going to talk about them because that feels random, but here we go. Time to dig in to the tight ends. We round out the bottom of the list of tight ends with Dalton Schultz, Hunter Henry, Evan Ingram, TJ Hawkinson, and Noah Fant on the outside looking in. Number five is tied with Noah Fant. I probably should have just included him on the outside looking in. And then we take a few steps up to legitimate high-end options at tight end. But first, number five. That would be $6,600 Darren Waller, projected for 16 fantasy points. They're three and a half point dogs with a 43 and a half point total against the Denver Broncos. Going to be an interesting game for the Raiders. We don't know if anything is going to change given the tumultuous nature of this organization over the past week to 10 days. Waller, not a huge chance for a monster, monster game. 0.7% to go for north of 30 fantasy points, but a 9% likelihood to be in the optimal. He's certainly a guy that you want to get to regularly given his tight end volume. At number four, we can pay all the way down, go to $3,200 Jared Cook, projected for eight and a half fantasy points. The Chargers have a date with the Ravens. They're slight dogs, but a 51 and a half point total looks really good. It's an average matchup. Uh, they're the, the, the Ravens have the 15th best defense according to PFF right now. You're not getting a ceiling game out of Jared Cook, or at least uh, that should not be your expectation. You're going to Cook for salary relief. And because of that salary relief, you can get a 12% chance that he is in the optimal. Speaking of salary savers, 3K Ricky Seals-Jones is in at the number three spot, projected for just under nine fantasy points. Gets to take on the Chiefs. You know the football team is going to be throwing 54 and a half point total, but this Chiefs defense isn't very good. We'll see if Washington can take advantage. Again, you're not going to Ricky Seals-Jones for a monster total. What you're going here for is salary savings. 14% likelihood he's in an optimal lineup. You just save a little bit of extra salary over Jared Cook. Coming off a monster week five, Mark Andrews is in at number two for this week. 5,200 projected for 13 and a half. You know we're getting a high offensive environment in this Chargers-Ravens game. Again, you don't think that he's going for 30 fantasy points or close to it like he did last week, but 14% likelihood that Andrews is in the optimal lineup. Almost enough to get, them, get him to the number one spot, but not quite there. That number one tight end would be Travis Kelsey, 7K. Kansas City is a six and a half point favorite with a 54 and a half point total against the Washington football team. The football team's defense has not been what everybody thought it was going to be. PFF has them 12th right now. I think that's more than okay. And I think the Chiefs are probably pretty angry at their start. So I'm happy to get to Kelsey. 6% chance he goes for more than 30. 18% likelihood he's in the optimal. Travis Kelsey is your number one tight end this week. Wide receiver is pretty flat here, so don't worry too much if you're at the top, at the bottom of the top 10 or not in this top 10 at all. There's not a huge gap at wide receiver. We've got Terry McLaurin, Brandon Cooks, Keenan Allen, Cooper Cup, and Robert Woods rounding out the bottom of my top 10. The first of three Cincinnati Bengal wide receivers are here at number five. That's T. Higgins, 5,300 in a fantastic matchup. Favorites, 47 point total, the worst defense according to PFF. This is number 32. It doesn't get any better than this, folks. You're gonna wanna go to Higgins or some of his teammates. 17% chance that Higgins is in the optimal. I think you're gonna need one Bengal today, maybe two. The game stack looks great. We just built a Bengals game stack for DraftKings on our lineup builder show, myself and Alex Baker, Osimo himself. So go check that out. But right now, Higgins is in at number five. Joining him in this three-way tie is his teammate, Jamar Chase, 6,700, projected for 18 fantasy points. The same awesome matchup against the Lions that we just talked about for Higgins, but there's a bigger ceiling on Chase. 5% chance he goes for more than 30. Same sort of sim odds, though, because the salary is just a little bit higher. 17% likelihood that he's in the optimal. I'm happy to go to Chase. I'm happy to go to Higgins. I'm happy to go to Chase plus Higgins. A lot of options for Cincinnati this week, and we're still not done. 
Number three, we're paying all the way up. 9K Devontae Adams, projected for 24 fantasy points, like he's a quarterback or something, taking on the Chicago Bears. The Packers are five and a half point favorites. Not the best total in the world, but this is the number 20 ranked defense at PFF. So you're not too worried and Adams transcends defense. 25% chance that Devontae Adams scores more than 30 fantasy points. You get another 17% chance that he's in the optimal. The salary is what's keeping him out of the optimal more frequently. 9K is a lot, but I don't know if anybody has a higher floor than Devontae Adams. Here we go, our final Bengal number two, Tyler Boyd, 5,200, nope, 5,400, projected for 15 fantasy points. Same great matchup against the lowly Lions. Another spot where you're not getting the big ceiling. So I think I like going to Chase plus one of Boyd or Higgins as my preferred combo here, just because I think Chase has the bigger ceiling. 18% chance that Tyler Boyd is in the optimal. One way or the other, you're going to be rostering a lot of Bengals wideouts. Finally, we close it out with the number one wide receiver this week. He's just too cheap. It's $5,500 Jacoby Myers. He's projected for 16 fantasy points. This is a 50-point game total for New England. They're slight dogs, so they're going to be throwing. The matchup against Dallas is great. They're the number 25 defense at PFF. A lot of people have been throwing on them. And the volume for Jacoby Myers has been there. That's what gets him to a 19% likelihood to be in the optimal. He's going to get a lot of targets, and he's at a price tag that works in any lineup construction, so Jacoby Myers is your number one option this week. We move it on to running back, where we do have a clear-cut number one option, but we round out the bottom of the top 10 with Devontae Booker, Aaron Jones, Ezekiel Elliott, Jonathan Taylor, and Austin Eckler on the outside looking in. And I really like Eckler this week, so I'm really excited to see who is the rest of my top five. First up would be the return of Christian McCaffrey, 8,800, which is a big time price tag, but he's projected for 21. It's not the best total in the world, just 45 and a half. The Carolina Panthers offense hasn't been spectacular. The Minnesota Vikings defense has been pretty good. They're number seven at PFF, but McCaffrey's got an 18% chance to go for more than 30. He's got one of the higher floors of anybody that you're going to find given his work in the passing game. And he's got a 15% chance to be in the optimal. If you're paying up at running back, you're not going to be all that wrong going to someone like McCaffrey as long as he's healthy. At number four, we're going to Khalil Herbert. Uh, Damian Williams on the COVID list right now, not looking like he's going to be playing. So $4,600 Herbert, 12.5 fantasy point projection. Solid enough matchup against Green Bay. It's the number 10 defense at PFF, but he's got to be involved somehow. And at 4,600, you don't need all that much. You're not expecting 30 fantasy points, but the floor should be pretty high for someone at 4,600. 17% of the time, he ends up in the optimal. This is just a really great piece to allow you to spend up elsewhere. But he's not the only pay down option you can get to. Daryl Williams is 4,900 in a okay-ish matchup against Washington. 13 fantasy point projection. Kansas City's favored, so he should see some carries in the second half. We know there's no Edwards E. Lair this week. 54 and a half point total means there's going to be a ton of scoring. This isn't another giant upside play. This is a value option you can get to. I like going to Williams and Herbert. Save a lot of salary, pay up aggressively across wideout and tight end. 17% chance that Williams is in the optimal. That's the same as Herbert. Two excellent sub 5K options. At number two, we've got DeAndre Swift. He's 6,300, projected for 17 fantasy points. It's a really good matchup against Cincinnati. Uh, it's a great spot for the Lions to actually pick up a W as well. Now, they're the number 26 offense, so that's not exciting. But Bengals are the number 21 defense. Nothing too crazy. A 47-point total. Perfectly fine. Swift's going to be involved in the game no matter what the script is really showing. 3% likelihood to go for more than 30, 18% chance to be in the optimal. That's enough to get him all the way to number two, but he's not at number one, and honestly, no one's close. My number one option this week is Daryl Henderson. He's only 6K. He's projected for 17 fantasy points. It's a fantastic matchup against the Giants. Nine and a half point favorites, almost a 50 point game total. The number 27 ranked defense. I mean, what's not to like here? 25% chance Henderson is in the optimal lineup. That's well outpacing any other individual running back. Daryl Henderson, because of this matchup and because of the price, is my number one running back this week. Now, before we get to the quarterbacks, one last reminder, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, only place you get the updates to my Sims as we get closer to lock. Hop in the comments section underneath this video. Let me know who your favorite and least favorite contenders are this week. And finally, shout out to No House Advantage for being the presenting sponsor of this video. Now we make it over to quarterback and there's one guy that's standing out by his lonesome by a mile, uh, an individual quarterback projection that I have not seen in a while given his current price. 
It's basically him and everybody else. So the bottom of my top 10 reads as Teddy Bridgewater, Joe Burrow, Matt Stafford, Pat Mahomes, and Jared Goff. Two through five might as well be the same, and then we'll get to number one. Number five, we've got Danny Dimes, and this one's terrifying. He's 5,500, and that's why you can get to him. Projected for 19.5 fantasy points. They're 10-point dogs, so you know he's going to be throwing. 48.5-point game total. That looks pretty good. But this is the number one defense at PFF. That is kind of scary. The Giants offense, not as bad as I actually expected. But here's the deal. 7% chance of being in the optimal. It's not all that interesting. Could just as easily be second. Could just as easily be 10th. It wouldn't take a big change. Everything at quarterback is sort of smushed together. I'm more likely to get to a Rams stack with a Giants bring back than the opposite. Although if you want to get to the Giants and bring back a Cooper Cup or a Daryl Henderson, I think that's viable too. Now this one I do like, $5,200 Mac Jones, projected for 19 fantasy points. Great spot against Dallas, 50 point total, 25th ranked defense, 8% chance to be in the optimal. You love going to him with someone like Jacoby Myers, and there are more than a few options to go to if you need a bring back from the Dallas side. At number three, we've got Carson Wentz in another fantastic matchup, 5,400 projected for 20 fantasy points, gets to take on the lowly Houston Texans. 10 point favorites here, 43 and a half point total is not what you totally want, but this is the number 30 defense and Houston's just bad pretty much everywhere. But again, 8% chance to be in the optimal. It's not all that crazy. If you don't like Wentz, there are plenty of other options to go around. Like another value option, $5,800 Taylor Heineke projected for 21. Washington's gonna be behind, six and a half point dogs, 54 and a half point total against a pretty not good Kansas City Chiefs defense. I think they snap out of it and get a little bit better as the season goes on. But right now, it seems like it's going to be pretty easy to throw on them. 9% chance, though, to be in the optimal. You could add up Heineke and Wentz and Mac Jones, and you still don't get to my number one quarterback. This one's easy. $7,400 Lamar Jackson is at the top of the heap. 28 fantasy point projection. The fact that he's only 7,400 is just crazy. Great matchup here against the Chargers. They're a middle of the pack defense. We've got a 51 and a half point total. You know there's going to be a lot of fantasy points to be had here. He goes for more than 30, 37% of the time, which is just crazy. He's in the optimal 28% of the time. Whether you're going Lamar naked, stacking him up with Hollywood Brown or Mark Andrews, whatever you wanna do, I think it works with Lamar because he is unquestionably, not even close, better than any other individual at any position. Lamar is the best play on this slate. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NFL top fives for week six. It's gonna be a good one on DraftKings. There's a FanDuel version of this video around here somewhere, so check it out. Keep your eyes peeled for it. It should be popping up right at the moment that you stop watching this one. Good luck this Sunday. Win some money. I'll be back with my NFL contenders for Sunday Night Football.